Right, let's build out this animated Pac-Man and in the process, showcase some of the new features in Pure Swift UI 2.1.1. I'm going to pause the timer whenever I want to talk about things in detail to avoid confusion as to what's going on, but you can find the source as well as the native version in the description if you want to have a play around with it and really get into the weeds. As usual with these things, I'm going to start off by defining the shape. I'm going to then refer to it in my view so I can get real-time updates when developing it. So let's start that clock and get to work. Let's put in the shape here. Pac-Man seems like a good name. And I'm going to make it conform to animatable by making this a CG float. And I'm going to initialize it by passing in whether or not we're animating the mouth. That means that the animatable data is going to be one if we are animating the mouth and zero if we're not animating the mouth. Now I'm just going to pause there because if you're not familiar with animatable data and the animatable protocol, it might be worth checking out a video I did on animating points within layout guides because I go into much more detail into what animatable data is and how to use it in your shapes. But all you need to know is that when animating, the Pac-Man shape is going to be rendered over and over again, while the value of animatable data iterates from zero to one and back again. And we can use this to control the animation of our Pac-Man's mouth. Let's go back up to the main view and refer to this shape, but we need a state variable to say whether or not we're animating the mouth. So I'm going to put that in first and then refer to our Pac-Man. State private variable animating mouth, uh, false to start with, and then we can say Pac-Man animating mouth is animating mouth. Our Pac-Man is going to have a size, which is a CG float, which we're going to set to 100. And I want to use an EO fill of true with a color of yellow for this. And I want a frame of the Pac-Man size. So stop once more, EO fill is a very recent addition because when I'm creating shapes, I usually need a fill that has an EO fill of true. So I created that extension just to make it much more readable. And you can see from the native version, it's just messy, isn't it? So now we can resume the clock and the preview and go down to our shape and start building out our Pac-Man. First thing I'm going to do is move to the center of the rectangle and then we're going to put in the mouth. It's going to be an arc, the center of which is going to be at the center of the rectangle. It's going to need a radius of half the height of the rectangle. The start angle is going to be 135 degrees, but we are going to 90 degrees based on the animatable data value. The end angle is going from 45 degrees, but that one is going to 89.999 degrees, also depending on where we are in our animation. Pause the clock. This requires quite a bit of explanation because there's a lot going on in that piece of code. So the two extension on angle was introduced in 2.1.0 and it really does hide a lot of things that you would have to do within your path function. This is what it would look like natively. Yes, it's a lot of work. The to extension essentially takes where you are and where you want to go and then gives you a linear interpolation between those two values based on the factor, which in this case is the animatable data. When you're at zero, you're at the start value. And when you're at one, you're at the end value. You can go beyond those extremes as well. But in this case, animatable data goes from zero to one. So we can shadow animatable data here. We know it's a CG float. And at the moment, it's sitting at zero. So if I put this to one, we can see it's gone all the way to the end of the animation. If I go to 0 0.9, it's almost at the end of the animation. As long as the animatable data is controlling where we are, as far as the start and end angles are concerned, this thing is going to animate as we want. The other thing you might be wondering is what are those angles? Because they're 90 degrees different from the native angles. Well, in pure Swift UI, angles are defined as going from zero at the top, which makes a lot more sense in my opinion than the legacy stance of having it start at three o'clock. In addition to that, the clockwise and anti-clockwise arguments actually work as expected instead of the reverse as you get in the native implementation. So to start with, I'm drawing an arc from 135 degrees clockwise to 45 degrees. 
When the mouth is closed, I'm going from 90 degrees all the way round to 89.999 degrees, which looks like it's closed. But if I actually set it to closed, then this happens. Let's set this to 1 and then set this to 90. Because it's going from 90 degrees to 90 degrees, it's not going anywhere. All right, so we don't get a shape. So that's why it's 89.999. So let's get rid of our local animatable data, start the clock, and get on with the eye. So we're going to need a circle where the center is at the relative coordinates 0 0.65 and 0 0.2, and the radius the width scaled to 0 0.05. Again, stop the clock. There's quite a lot going on here as well. Circle is a fantastic extension on Path, which saves us a huge amount of code that we would have to write to put an ellipse in here, as you can see in the native version. But what you'll also notice is this relative coordinate thing going on in Rect. This is a really useful way of referring to any point within a CG Rect, taking into account the minimum and maximum values of X and Y. So that means you can just play around with the position of the eye by just modifying this subscript. And not only in this path function do we have much fewer lines of code, we've also got much simpler code. So not only is it saving you time, it's also saving your reasoning skills because you can look at this and know exactly what's going on as opposed to the massive mess of code that you get in the native version. So now I'm going to get off my soapbox and finish up this Pac-Man animation. We go back up to our shape. And when this thing appears, we want to say with animation, this is an ease in out with the duration of 0 0.2, and we're just going to repeat forever. And auto reverse is true by default. So we like that. And we want to say the animating mouth variable is true. Let's stop and see what we've got. Look at that, it's animating. Fantastic and easy as pie. We also want this thing to animate from off screen left to off screen right. So let's do that. We'll need a state private variable to say whether or not we're animating position, and that starts off as false. We want to say that the max x offset is equal to the UI screen half main width, and we're going to add to that the Pac-Man size times 0 0.5. And we say the x offset is equal to the max x offset times one or minus one, depending on whether or not we're animating the position. Just like that. And then we give it an X offset of the X offset. And finally, we just have to say that it's a linear animation with a duration of three. We're going to repeat forever, but this time we're not going to auto reverse. Animating position is true. Okay, let's resume and see where we are. And would you believe it, we've got an animating Pac-Man that's going across the screen and munching away. So we can clean things up, just move this up to the far private level. And I do believe that is the end of the show. If you found that interesting, then let me know by liking the video. And if it's inspired you to try out Pure Swift UI for yourself, let me know in the comments. I'll be really happy to hear it. I don't know what we're going to be doing next, but whatever it is, I'm sure it's going to be brilliant. So if you haven't subscribed yet, consider doing that, and there's less chance that you'll miss whatever it is it turns out to be. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them below. But in the meantime, thanks for joining me. See you next time.